It's been about three hours since the benediction was pronounced, and I've come back here to Soldier Field to talk to you. When the appeal was given, about 2,000 people came forward to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now the stadium is empty. The breeze is blowing. I think this afternoon was the hottest that I have ever preached in the sense of temperature, because the temperature in the stadium was just about 100. And I don't think I ever came any nearer passing out during a sermon. I remember I sort of almost held on to the pulpit one time and found myself quoting a verse of scripture. I don't know whether you could sense that uh, when you were watching on your screen. But that didn't do away with the burden upon our hearts for the people here in Chicago. And now we come to the end of this great crusade. We've come to the end of these five telecasts across America. These telecasts have been carried on over 160 stations, more than we have ever carried before. We took this as a gigantic step of faith. We are depending on your support and your prayers. I hope you write to us and let us know that you are standing with us. But more important is your own personal relationship to Jesus Christ. This afternoon, I talked on Agrippa, almost being persuaded to follow Christ. Some of you during this week have almost been persuaded to give your life to Jesus Christ, but you haven't done it. You're sitting there in the quietness of your home. You may be in a bar. You may be in some unique place that I don't even know about watching right now. And God has spoken to you as you've seen the great crowd. And as you heard the sermon and heard the singing, the Spirit of God spoke to your heart. The Bible teaches that we have two sets of ears. You have physical ears, but you also have ears in your soul. And while I was speaking here this afternoon, God was speaking to your soul. And as this stadium is empty now, your own heart is empty, and yet Christ is willing to come in and fill it, to bring you a peace, a joy, and a satisfaction that you've never known before. But more than that, to adopt you into his family, you become a child of God. The Bible teaches that history is going to a definite objective, and that objective is the reign of Jesus Christ. His kingdom is ultimately going to triumph, as I talked about the other night. And you can be a part of it. And the decision, the stepping over the line, can be right now, as you give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. But just as Agrippa neglected or refused to repent and turn to God, so many of you are in danger of doing the same. But I'm going to ask you right now to do it. You don't have to be here in this big stadium. There's nothing about the mechanic of coming forward that saves anybody's soul. Coming forward is an open acknowledgement and a testimony of an inward experience that you have with Christ. But this inward experience with Christ, this encounter is the most important thing. And that could happen to you right now, wherever you are. Whatever your condition, whatever your circumstances. Oh, but you say, Billy, I'm really too great a sinner. I, I, I've just been too bad. I've done too many things. I'm too big a hypocrite. No, you're not too much a sinner. There's no sin too bad but what Christ can forgive. When he died on that cross, he was dying for you. He took your place. Your sins were put on him. Not just the sins of this big crowd that we had today at Soldier Field, but your sins, your own sins, were placed on him. And now, if by faith, you will receive him into your heart, he will forgive those sins. And then you can know something of the power of his own resurrection. The same power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead is available to you right now to help you live a new life if you will put your confidence and your faith in him. And as you saw these people come forward this afternoon, so in your heart, you can come forward right now. You don't have to be in a church or a stadium. Just now, you can make your commitment to Christ. I remember when I came forward to receive Christ, I remember that the newspaper the next day said that not very much had happened, perhaps an emotional experience. But did you know from that one group of people that came forward that night, I know 11 men in the ministry right now. We never know what happens to one person coming 
to Jesus Christ. Your life can be transformed and changed. Perhaps you won't sense this change so much until the next year or two years. But as you read your Bible and pray and witness for Christ and get into the church, you will be able to sense a tremendous transformation. And if you make your decision now, go talk to your minister. Goodbye, and may the Lord bless you.